Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I want to address a lens that Canon has recently released, the Canon RF 800mm f11 IS STM lens. And I want to talk about it and give you my opinion of it and uh, hopefully my point of view will be helpful. However, if you wish to check out the other video that I've done about the 600 RF millimeter F11 IS STM lens, check it out because I talk a lot about what I've said in this video about that lens. Um, but in general, um, I'm gonna give you my honest point of view from a photographer's point of view when it comes to wildlife. But this will apply to sports photography, sailing photography, anything that requires you to photograph things from a long distance that require uh, stopping action quickly. And you're gonna struggle with F11 because F11 is a very small aperture. That's a very little amount of lighting. And the more light you have coming to your sensor on your camera, uh, the faster the shutter speed you can obtain and the more likely you are to stop action. 800 mm is going to be fantastic, you know, and obviously um, it's, it's like a, a dream for a lot of people because many people can't afford the EFL bazooka lenses, um, which are 500, 600 millimeters at F4, which lets a ton of light in and obviously has a, four stops of image stabilization. As this lens does, that's fantastic image stabilization. It, it's great to have. But the downside is image stabilization doesn't compensate for motion. If your subject matter is moving at any speed, it will help you. Um, this is why I wanted to talk about the uh, F11 um, aperture on this lens, which I think is shocking. And it's unbelievable that Canon has brought a uh, lens out with that sort of aperture. Um, and they're bringing out other lenses. And I do want to address the 500 7.1 RF lens and I'll do that in a separate video but in this video I want to talk about um, the, the aperture of f11 and when you're trying to balance your um, shutter speed to be fast enough because in principle you need a shutter speed equal to the millimeter of your lens so 800 millimeters you need 800 of second to get fast enough shutter speed to stop motion and I suspect even 800 of a second might not be fast enough in my experience. You generally need a lot more than that, um, especially when you're dealing with birds. If you're a birder, you know, if you're someone that wants to photograph homing birds, you, you're talking, you're wanting to get a shutter speed of, say, you know, 2,500 of a second, because hummingbirds move incredibly fast. The same be true of um, insects, say bumblebees, you want to photograph bumblebees, you're going to struggle um, to get a fast enough shutter speed. I just wanted to illustrate the point how, of how important it is to let lots of light come into your, your uh, sensor on the back of your camera. Uh, obviously, the mirrorless cameras are more sensitive um, and you will get a few extra stops of light entering the, the sensor than you would on say SLRs because technology always advances and improves um, but you're not, never going to get 10 times the quality that you would on an SLR you know in terms of sensitivity on the ISO rating the ISO uh, is related directly to the, uh, the sensor on, on your camera and um, the higher the ISO um, the worse your images tend to look um, so the lower the ISO the better but the only way of getting a lower ISO is having a faster shutter speed and having, you know, lots of good weather. Um, if you can't do that, you have to use what we call specialist lenses that can operate at 2.8 aperture. 2.8 aperture is like a massive open ring in your lens that lets a lot of light in. An F11 is something like that, really small. Um, and you can sometimes suffer from diffraction um, in your lens. I'm not dissing the quality of these lenses, do not get me wrong, primes are always going to produce sharp images and you're going to be really happy with the results. My problem is the f11 aperture is just too dark for most scenarios. 
On a bright sunny day, yes, it will be fantastic. It will produce the results you want it to do. No problem at all. It will be hit and miss whether you get the high enough shutter speed to achieve what you want to achieve on a bright sunny day. But on an overcast day, a dark day, forget about it. Uh, sunset, sunrise, forget about it. Indoors, forget about it. If you're um, doing a football event, for example, and they've turned on the lights, pretty much forget about it because F11 ain't good enough, ain't gonna cut it. Um, generally speaking, most photographers at uh, football events are using lenses of 2.8 or F4 minimum, especially at night time, doing uh, you know, a lot of games in the UK, for example, football, I played at night time because it starts to get dark around three, four, five o'clock at night. So I just wanted to give you my take on this lens. I'm not dissing this lens in any shape or form. Um, it's probably gonna produce really good sharp results. But if you're thinking of catching fast motion, uh, I want to give you my point of view from a wildlife and sports photographer's point of view um, and tell you why I don't think it's a great lens for doing those things. Um, it's, it's a difficult lens really to quantify whether I would want to use it really. Um, as alternatives, I would steer you towards the um, the EFL lens, the uh, 400 mm 5.6, has no image stabilization, but if you put it on a body with stabilization, um, you get some stabilization obviously on there. Um, there's the AF 300 F4 lens, you can always put an extender on that to make it 5.6. And obviously the Tamron and Sigma uh, Super Zooms, which I pretty much recommend. So obviously this 800mm F11 IS STM lens is a stepping motor. It's not going to be as quick as USM motors in terms of focus speed. So Amazon's got it on here at 979.99. So it is fairly expensive. Um, I just can't justify the F11 aperture. I'm really sorry. I just don't think it's usable. It's up to you to make your own mind up. I just wanted to give you my take uh, from someone who does wildlife photography and occasionally does a bit of sports uh, and just tell you that I think, I just don't know where this lens would be useful in terms of its dark aperture. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you in the next one. And I just wanted to say, have a nice day and thank you for watching.